400 miles, our heroes have been chased by squall after squall through the doldrums. The storms, interrupted only by the infamous calm, where there was no escape from the harsh sun. The crew was terrified. I mean, really terrified. You can see it in their eyes. They're, they're really scared. The boat was being pushed to its limit. After four days, 400 miles, and fortunately not sinking the boat, one of the most remote islands in the northern Pacific is appearing out of the mist. The legendary pirate island of Isla del Coco. Morning, day four, and here's Isla del Coco. Ah, what an exciting feeling, huh? After paradise, I've only seen water. So we are officially moored at the Coco Island, Isla del Coco, Costa Rica. We don't have permission to do this though because we've been calling for. I don't know, 40 minutes or something. And they just haven't answered yet, the administration office right there. We're gonna wait till they allow us to leave the boat, anchor the boat or whatever. And in the meantime, we're gonna repair the sail, right, James? Yeah, this thing is, um, one of these battens didn't break, but uh, I, I, I messed up when I put them together. I didn't put tape around the oh, coupling. good. And the coupling, um, came out and it ended up ripping through the sail. But the good thing is this is right where the coupling goes So it won't rip anymore and I've got some rip stop So this is completely my fault. We need to do this with all the battens It happened to me one one other time with in Mercia Lagos so we need to take all the battens out that have couplers and Retape them That's but not breakfast first though. but but you know what we're gonna do that before we leave But we'll do this one right now, and then we'll have breakfast, okay? This is the batten, but it's got a coupler that goes over the top of it that needs to have some tape on it. I should have figured, man, that would rip the sails. So, the officials just were here and we did all the procedure. They gave us our tickets. Our tickets, our tickets. Where do you have the tickets? These are the tickets that we got from the rangers. This is per person per day $50 entrance fee. This is per person per day $10 for snorkeling. And lastly, per boat per night $40 per, uh, for 24 hours of anclaje, which is anchoring. Comes up to $480 for three days. Ready to go now. First dive in Cocoa Islands. It stopped raining. Our tanks are full now, that was good. Over there. The boat that you see there anchored uh, is a dive boat that's here all the time. That's chartering people back and forth. 18 passengers, 9 crew. That's a lot of crew. You gotta think about it, they're getting all their meals taken care of. So you got one cook, a cook's a helper, the captain, the first mate, the dive instructors. They, they have to have dive guides too. Yeah. But the point is that they have a submarine that can go down 100 meters. That's 300 feet. It comes at a small price of 800 bucks. <sighs> At the small price of $800, you too can go on this manned submersible vehicle. So after four days at sea, we were so excited to get in the water. 
All we wanted to do was go diving. While I had a blast diving the first day and the coral field just looked amazing in Isla del Coco, I did not see one big shark. James kept coming up and say, right here, right here, there's a big one. But as soon as I went down to see it, I was gone already. Must have been just horrible timing on my side. James and I dove until our legs hurt and our lungs just couldn't do any longer. We went home, cooked up some beans, fell into bed, but as soon as the sun rose, we were back at it. Day two in Cocos, I just woke up and the water quality in the day is beautiful, so check this out. I'm gonna get the GoPro on and go for a little swim, we'll see how pretty the water is now. like one now, James is making lunch and I think this is the best dive spot since the Cayman Islands. Everything is like at 12-15 meters so I'm at my limit but I don't really think I'm at my limit. You need to give me some tips how to free dive better. We almost got eaten by a shark this morning. There was a huge four meter tiger shark. I have it on video. <laughs> you scared me! I thought you were a shark! <laughs> you we came to Isla del Coco to dive with sharks. The reason we were worried about this particular encounter with a shark is that there is one tiger shark that has been attacking people in Isla del Coco recently. We swam really far from the boat to a cool looking waterfall. Unbeknownst to us, this waterfall was coming off of a cliff and that's where all the brown-footed boobies nest and the newborn boobies fall into the water and the tiger sharks find them a delicacy. So there was a huge 12-foot tiger shark living underneath these booby nests and we were treading on his ground. Rafael just saved us from the big four-meter tiger. Dude, I got it on video. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that thing was huge. I was like, oh, tiger. Thanks, bro. Also, I saw a bunch of hammerheads. That was my goal for today. So I reached that. I, I hope I got some video up there. Did you see them? Yes. Hammerhead sharks have a very nomadic behavior. 
and many of them are not recorded to visit Isla del Coco twice in their lifetime. There's big schools of ocean trigger here. There's huge damselfish. There's so many fish. Amberjacks. Oh my god. Huge the amberjack one. here are ridiculously big. We need to. Yeah. Not Diving makes me hungry, on. not only because it's exercise, but also because there's so much juicy, tasty stuff floating by all the time. This amberjack is huge. I want lunch. Yeah, those were one of the biggest amberjack we've ever seen. Yeah. Quite tempting with our empty fridge. Quite tempting. Oh, there's uh, Galapagos sharks here. That, they look like bull sharks, but they're not. And they're big and fat. And they're like big around and yeah. cool looking. So we learned that uh, Galapagos sharks are not actually endemic to Gal the Galapagos Islands. I think he lives under the boat. As, somewhere yeah. around here, because I saw, I saw him a yesterday bunch. a bunch. I wanted to go night diving, but I'm kind of worried about him. That's a Galapagos shark. That was just chasing me. That's a Galapagos shark. I went, and, I went and followed him, and he was like, "Oh, how do you like it?" And he started following me, and I didn't like it. <laughs> I think I'll just leave that one alone. I love this island. I think this is the. This was a great decision. It was a bitch to get here. Really? We're gonna be out of food when we when we get to Galapagos. It's it's down to the wire now. And propane. Yeah, we didn't uh, provision very well. I mean, we're not gonna starve, but we didn't catch any fish, which pr pretty much cut on in in our budget plan for Dude, food. Dude, that killed our provision plan. We had dinner. Now we're going back into the water till the sun goes down. Uh, James hopefully is going to show me some breathing exercises so that I can stay down longer to see more and yeah let's see how that goes this time I'm gonna bring a knife though in case the tiger shark is going to attack Jamie again I'll protect you <laughs> so yeah let's hope we see some hammerheads again Freediving is all about minimizing your energy usage. That means that at the surface already, you have to slow down your heart rate. Basically, you have to relax to be good at the sport. And that's just one of the most beautiful things about it. Then you descend without air tanks or any heavy or expensive gear. You can go and explore the wildlife, the amazing coral heads, especially here in Isla del Coco. And the peace down there is just incredible. You really won with the marine world when you're underwater free diving. And as an advantage to scuba diving, you don't let out any bubbles. And that means that the wildlife is less afraid of you. actually love to learn more about freediving. So if you are or you know a freediving instructor that would like to come aboard and teach us a thing or two about this beautiful sport in exchange for a stay on Zangaro, please contact us by email. We'd really like to talk to you. very amazed by the Coca Islands. The diving there was insane. All over Costa Rica, they take really, really good care of their, of their beautiful land. So James got, a, got awesome footage from all the fishing ads and all the fishing line. They, they get out of the ocean, they've got ocean kayaks. They, all kinds of stuff that comes floating by, they, they all collect that and they don't have 
they don't have the means to to transport all that trash to to the mainland Costa Rica so it's just piling up in their backyards they've got a warehouse full of fishing nets that they've seized if they catch people fishing there they'll seize their boats uh, they'll seize they'll, they'll deport them from Costa Rica they're serious so to see all that and to learn more about the history of Isla de Coco make sure to subscribe right now and We'll show you that next episode. Also, thank you patrons for making it possible and you viewer that is not a patron yet, check out our Patreon site. We got a bunch of behind the scene and extra footage for our patrons. And yeah, till next time. Here you go, a nice end screen of, I wanted to put on an end screen that looks like an aquarium. You know, when we put the GoPro down and all the parts that.